What's up everybody, my name is Dan On, and welcome to Honestly. As you guys can see in this video, the production value, production quality is not quite what I normally like it to be, but that's okay. Um, in order to show you guys all the features of this chair and the things I want to do in this video, I can't be sitting down and things like that. So I'm on the ground right now, but that's okay, and I hope you guys will bear with me. But anyways, a few years ago, I had this old ghetto beat up pleather chair, and my wife told me, you need to get rid of that. So I did, and then I went out and I picked up a Herman Miller on for $70. And then I realized what I had and I sold it for $450. And then I took that money and I bought another Aeron for like $200, $250. And then I sold that one for $450. And I've done that for about 100 different Aerons now. So I know these chairs in and out and I love it. That's why I have a, my personal Aeron here. And uh, if you guys want to know why I love it so much, you can go ahead and check out the link here. But as promised in this follow-up video, I'm going to show you guys how you can pick one of these up for cheap because brand new they sell for over $1,000 and that's a lot of money. So there's a lot of ground to cover. Let's get honest. If you guys haven't figured out by now, the general way you pick up an Aeron for cheap is by buying it used. And I know that doesn't thrill everybody because you may not like buying things used, but hear me out before you click away. Um, I guarantee if you use the principles in this video, when you go to sell your chair, you will either break even or more likely make a profit. Just to give you guys an example, I picked this up for 150 bucks. It is a fully loaded with a posture fit chair. And if I were to sell it today, I could sell it for $450 easy if I was patient. I could probably sell it for about $600. So hopefully I've caught your interest. And uh, let me know in the comments below what your guys' best find in the use section has been. And if you like what you've heard so far, please give this video a thumbs up because that helps the YouTube algorithm and helps this channel a lot. Really appreciate it. I think the best way to break this video down is to break it into five different sections, and I'll leave the timestamps below. But the first one's gonna be an overview of the different features and the ones that I think are the most critical for when you pick up the chair. The second point is going to be how much should you expect to pay for you know this chair versus that chair and then the third one point is going to be like well how can i get it for even cheaper than that the fourth point is going to be when you actually go to pick up the chair what should you look for what are some yellow flags red flags things that i've learned over the years after selling a bunch of these chairs and then the fifth point is going to be frequently asked questions whether from the previous video that you guys left comments in my friends who have asked me to find them a chair or just general things that people have asked me over the years so what are the different configurations and which one do I recommend? Well, first thing you're gonna look for is the sizing of the chair. And the way you determine the size is by feeling, you're gonna see Herman Miller back here, you're gonna feel back here for dots. If you feel one dot, that's a size A, it's the smallest. Two dots is a size B, and three dots is a size C, it's the largest one. And Herman Miller has a guide, but some of those sizes kind of overlap. So just to give you guys a reference, I'm about 170 pounds, five foot six, five foot seven, and the B fits me really, really well. I had a size A before, and it was just a little bit too small, so hopefully that helps you guys out there. But uh, as for the other feature of the chair, I'm gonna go from bottom to top. And the reason why is because the arms here are actually gonna be the most important telling feature, and I'll get to that in a minute. But the very first thing is in the most basic chair, you're only gonna have two different options uh, in terms of the levers here on the bottom. You're gonna have this, which is the hydraulic, which controls the up and down motion of the chair, and you're gonna have this knob right here, which is the tension knob, and that uh, that tension knob tightens or loosens the tension for when you sit in the chair and you lean back. So let me uh, hop in the chair here for a second. You see how the chair leans? So if I were to spin this to the right, that would be much harder for me to lean back. And if I were to loosen it, then it would be much easier for me to lean back and I could just fly back if I really want it. So in the most basic chair, these are the only two knobs that you would see. You would not see these two knobs here. I hope the light's catching that. And basically these two knobs are, what this one does is it's a rear tilt limiter. So if you were to sit down in the chair and you were to lock it completely, if you were to sit down and try to lean back, the chair is completely locked. Then it has a middle level and if you were to do that, then you could go about halfway back and then it would lock. And then fully unlocked would mean you know, the chair is totally uninhibited and you can lean back as far as you want. This here in the front is a bit of a unique feature. I haven't seen it on any chair before and it's easier to show you than to explain. And it allows you to basically lean forward. So right now the chair is at a 90 degree angle and if I were to lean back, it stops at 90 degrees. But with this option here, sorry, let me turn this way. If I were to lean back and then pull this knob up, watch how far the chair goes forward. And this allows you to tilt forward and I think if you were to tight, you can lean forward and type. I have literally never found this feature to be useful. I have never used it once in my life, nor have I talked to anybody who found it useful. So take it or leave it. Now, of these features, I think you don't need 
either of these two knobs. And I say that because in an ideal sitting position, let me hop back in the chair again. In an ideal sitting position, you should not be locked 90 degrees perpendicular to the ground because I've heard and I've read that it puts a lot of pressure on your lower back. Instead, what you wanna do is you wanna be able to tighten the tension knob so that when you sit down, it, you go into a more natural catch position. You're not flying back, but you're also not totally stiff and upright. You wanna come into a natural kind of lean back position. So because of that, I don't think you need either of these two options. So if you were to find a chair and it doesn't have these two options, I think that's totally okay. It's up to you guys, but for sure for everybody, I don't think you need the forward tilt unless you really see a need for that. Anyways, so then moving on to the next part is going to be the lumbar support. So right here, you guys see that this is called the posture fit. The posture fit is their highest level of lumbar support, and they come in three different levels. They come with nothing, right? That's the most basic. The second one is it comes with the rubber foam pad, and the rubber foam pad has plastic grips here, and you can slide it in or out, and you can also change the direction of the foam pad because one side is thicker, it's more aggressive lumbar, and then the other side is thinner, less aggressive. And again, you can slide it up and down this back plastic here, and you can move it as high as you want or as low as you want. This is the, oh, so dusty. This is the um, most supreme, uh, you know, premium. Uh, this is called a posture fit. And the way this works is you cannot move it up or down. As you can see, it stays static. But you will find that there is a little knob back here. And what you can do is you can twist that knob, and maybe you can see it here and it'll tighten that lumbar support. And if you loosen it, it'll come out like that. And it's just basically more aggressive. You tighten it, more aggressive. You loosen it, a little less aggressive. So of these three, which one do I recommend? Well, it's a tie. I think it's a tie between, obviously, the, the, the rubber foam pad and the posture fit. And the reason I say that is because with the, with the rubber foam pad, it's customizable. You can raise it and lower it to your liking downside of it is that if you do that wrong and you don't know what you're doing, you could actually end up causing yourself a little bit more back pain. And I've experienced that before. So if you don't know what you're doing, um, if you, you like to experiment, you, you think you might want it higher up than this, which kind of really sits on the lower back, then that might be for you. If you're somebody who's kind of like, nah, my lower back kind of hurts and I don't feel like doing all the adjustments and all the testing and stuff like that, then the posture fit is for you. The good news is that with both of these lumbar supports, you can buy them aftermarket. And the rubber foam pad, you can buy on eBay for like $20, $30, super cheap. Um, the posture fit is a little bit more expensive at $100 to $150. And uh, even though this isn't hard to install, you do have to puncture the mesh down here a little bit. So if you're not super comfortable about that, then you probably want to find a chair with this already installed. And I think generally you'll save money if you pick one up with this already installed. But again, up to you, up to personal preference. Moving up on the chair now is going to be the arms. And the arms also come in three different variants. The first is you're going to have a completely static arm that doesn't move up or down and doesn't pivot left or right like you see here. So that's the most basic arm. It is a static arm, doesn't move at all. Then you have the second tier of arm, and that allows you to move the arm up or down. <laughs> allows you to move the arm up or down, but this will not pivot. It will, it's stationary and it will not move. And then you have the most premium option of arm, which is this one here, where you can unlock it, you can go up or down, and then you lock it here. And it also swivels. You can swivel inwards to the middle and out. Now, of these three, I highly recommend you get the fully loaded arm. And the reason for that is because when it is static, it is not as high up as this. The basic model, it's not as high up as this. It's lower. And I'm only five foot six, five foot seven, so I don't have long arms. But imagine if the arm were pretty low and you're typing on a computer and you need to rest your arms, then your arms have to sink down to here to rest. I personally prefer that after I'm finished typing, my arms just come down right here and I don't need to reset or sink down my arms. So I really like the height adjuster. The reason why I think the swivel is super important, and sorry, I'm not trying to show you guys my crotch here, but the reason why I think uh, the swivel is really important is because when it's static, I've noticed that the arm is, well, these chairs are really robust and I've noticed that it just kind of feels claustrophobic and when you get out of the chair, you realize that it hits your leg like that. I don't know if you saw that, but it kind of hits your leg and because these chairs are so robust, when you hit it, 
it's going to hurt you and you're going to feel it. So by having the arms being able to swivel like this, it just you just push it out of the way. Um, it's also really nice because let's say you're typing and you've got the arms. This is the neutral position, right? Right in the middle. You're typing like this and then you lower your arms, but your armrests aren't there. Well, if you were to be able to swivel them in and you're typing, your elbows naturally rest right on the arm pad. So that's really nice. And then when you want to get out, you can open up the arms fully and then be able to escape however you'd like. So really nice, really nice to have. Recommend you guys get the fully loaded arms. You guys heard me say that the arms are the most important feature of this chair and it doesn't have anything to do with what I just mentioned. The reason why the arms are super important is because they're gonna tell you the general age of the chair. You see how my arm here has a tab adjuster? Well, in 1992, when the first Aerons came out, they actually came out with a gear adjuster. And if you look on any website, you'll see a bunch of chairs with the gear. Well, in 2005, they replaced the gear with these tabs. So if you see any chair with a gear on it, that chair is at least 15 to 28 years old. And that's an old chair. These chairs were really built to last. Like I've sat in chairs that are 20 years old that felt perfectly fine. So I wouldn't be too nervous about the age of the chair, rather, Focus on the functionality of the chair and wait to my part four where I show you guys like what are some things that you should look for to see whether you have a chair that's in good condition or poor condition. But my recommendation to you guys is again, don't obsess about the age. Instead, worry about how well the chair functions. 15 to 28 years is a, is a, is a pretty old chair though. So if you see a gear, my recommendation would be like run, right? Try not to pick those up. Try to find one with the tab. If you guys want to know the exact age of the chair, some of these chairs have a sticker whether under here or under this part of the chair. So look at that and you can see the manufacturing date. The adhesive isn't great, so sometimes those things fall off. So keep that in mind. Again, don't concern yourself with the age of the chair. Worry more about how well the chair functions. And again, I'll talk about that in point four. Moving to point three, how much should you expect to pay for a chair? Well, this chair here is a fully loaded, like it literally has every single option a chair could have except for you know other things like leather arms and stuff, but that you'll never find in the wild. Anyways, so for a chair like this, you can expect to pay Craigslist Marketplace. The normal person would expect to pay $450 to $600 for this chair. And then from there, every feature you downgrade, remove $50. So for example, let's say you didn't have a posture fit and you had a rubber foam pad instead. For that chair, you should probably expect to pay like $400 to $550. And then let's say you were to downgrade the swivel, let's say the arms don't swivel. Well, that chair would be 400 to 500, 400 to, oh my, I can't do math, 350 to, four, five, 350 to 500 dollars, and so on and so on and so on. So if you were to have the most basic chair, you can expect to pay anywhere between 150 and 300 dollars. The most highest chair, like this one, 450 to 600 dollars. So that's the typical Craigslist market price. You might be thinking, well then, how do I find one for cheaper than the Craigslist market price? And the way I do it is that I search more generally. You see, a lot of people who are looking for Herman Miller Aeron will type in Herman Miller Aeron when they do their search. The problem with that is that if I know that I have an Aeron and I want to sell it, the way I price check my used Aeron is I go to a site like Craigslist, and I type in Herman Miller Aeron, I see everybody else is selling theirs for 450, so then I list mine for 450. So then people are just buying and selling at 450. Instead, you want to find the seller who doesn't know what they're selling or doesn't really care and just calls it an office chair. So what I would do is I would go somewhere at Craig's, look, like, uh, so, uh, I would go somewhere like Craigslist, just type in chair, sort by the newest listings, then search down to the 10th page. And if you don't find an error on, that's okay. The next day, I would do it again. Type in chair, sort by newest, and keep searching until I see a chair that I recognize from yesterday's search. Because that generally means that you've exhausted all the new listings. And then you do it again the next day and the next. And I found that within a month, I find at least one chair that's a, a good to excellent deal. Some months have been better. I found 10 one month and some months are not that great and you just find one. So to give you guys a concrete example, the way I picked this up is that, again, I typed in chair. I picked it up in Washington, D.C. There are some young guys, uh, look like postgrads, who were cleaning out their house, cleaning out, a, it seemed like a house they just purchased. And... Um, they listed this as a modern office chair for 150 bucks, and that's how I found this one. The first one that I picked up, again, I just typed in chair. I didn't know what I was looking for at that time, actually. I just typed in chair. It looked cool. I went and I picked it up, 70 bucks. I saw Herman Miller on the back of it. I said, huh, that sounds familiar. So I Googled it, and then I found out that I could sell it for 450 so that's how I did that. And as a matter of fact, I actually did a search of just chair on Facebook Marketplace leading up to this video, 
Then I found one chair that is a, a fully loaded, brand, uh, almost like it looks brand new, Herman Miller Aeron with the posture bit and everything, and it was selling for $350. And that still sounds expensive, but like I said, that chair normally sells for $450 to $600 easy. So when I looked again a couple hours later, that listing was gone. I, I, I wasn't there. It's in Manassas, Virginia, so I'm not, I don't live in Virginia anymore, but that's how I found it. And uh, yeah, it works. So let's say you found a chair for cheap and you're ready to go check out the chair. What are some things that you should look for? And I have a list here because I'm not going to remember it all and I want to make sure I cover all of it. So <clears throat> what are the first things that you should look for? Well, I already told you guys that one of the things you should look for is are these tabs or are they gears? If they're gears, the chair is gonna be very, very old, 15 to 28 years old. If you've got tabs, you know that it's less than 15 years old. Probably gonna be older than three, so anywhere between three and 15 years old. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to look for is the hydraulics. So I've noticed that on a lot of older Herman Miller chairs, the hydraulics get a little bit bumpy. And what you should experience when you lift it up is when you push the button, it should be a very smooth ride. I've noticed that on some of the older Herman Miller Aerons, what'll happen is towards the end of the ride, you'll feel like a flat boom. Like you'll just kind of collapse at the very bottom instead of being smooth all the way down. Now, I don't think the hydraulics are gonna be so bad that you're going to, the chair is just gonna collapse on you. I just think that if your hydraulics are a little bit rocky, especially towards the bottom, that's gonna be a place where you can negotiate and bring the price down even further. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to look for is the mesh. You're gonna to wanna to check the mesh because sometimes the mesh can be punctured, sometimes it can fray. If it's frayed anywhere in the leg area, walk away from it. The reason I say that is because this mesh is like a plasticky mesh and if there are things sticking out, it's gonna hurt you and it's gonna prickle you, so you don't want that. The places you're gonna especially wanna look for is near the where the mesh meets the hard, super hard plastic here and um, if it's on the bottom, if you see any kind of fraying on the bottom or tears, don't buy that chair. And the reason I say it is because all your weight is here. So you can imagine that it's just going to keep tearing and fraying over the years. If you find that, that you see some fraying on the back, I would say that's probably not a deal breaker, probably somewhere where you want to negotiate the price down um, because your weight's not back here, right? Again, if it's up here where your back is going to rest, Probably not a chair worth picking up because the plastic is prickly again and it's probably gonna poke you. So something to look for is the frayed mesh. The next thing you're gonna wanna look for is check if, you, or if you're getting one with a foam lumbar pad, uh, the foam bar here. Make sure you take the foam bar completely out. The reason why I say that is because they're in a foam lumbar pad, the plastic that connects to that foam part is very, very thin. And it's hard to push that foam pad down and up. It's really, really tight, and because of that, that plastic breaks pretty easily. And uh, if it's broken, it's not gonna provide you that lumbar support you want because it's gonna be loose in the corners. So make sure you check that lumbar pad. Also check for any tears on that lumbar pad as well. The next thing you're gonna check for, and it's a little bit odd, but this is really, really important, is smell the chair, right? Like, and I I'm being serious, smell the chair because some of these chairs are often repo chairs like from offices and they just sit in a storage space that's musty and you know kind of gross smelling for months on end and because of that the chair is just gonna pick up that smell and you can't air it out. Um, this isn't meant to be a hateful comment at all because I love, love, love Indian food and I love the people from India um, but one time I picked up a Herman Miller Aeron from a, a, a gentleman um, who, who I guess ate a lot of curry, and so his chair smelled like curry like crazy, and there is no such thing as airing out an Aeron. You can use all the Febreze in the world, but trust me, learn from my lessons learned. Uh, smell the chair, make sure it doesn't smell funky, because you'll never get that smell out. The last thing you want to check for is squeaking. Some of you guys are more sensitive this to, to, than others, but I have noticed that on some Aeron chairs that you will that it will squeak a little bit. And the way you want to check it is make sure that the chair, if it has the back lock, is unlocked and just kind of roll back with it, right? And make sure it's not making a high-pitched squeak. You can hear some of the plastic squeaking on this one, but make sure that it does not squeak if that's going to drive you mad. All right, fifth and final part of the video, frequently asked questions. Again, I got my list here for me here. So frequently asked questions that I've received over the years. The first one is going to be, can I claim warranty on my chair? So Herman Miller has an amazing warranty of 12 years, and I would say 
you're welcome to try. Um, I actually was able to get warranty on one of my chairs before that was just at that 11th year. And um, yeah, and their warranty service is amazing, by the way. They send you this like custom Herman Miller box and all you do is open it and you just slide your chair right in. And then the guy who uh, picks it up will come to your house and pick up the whole chair for you. And it's pretty amazing. Their, their warranty service is really sweet. So next question is, are there such things as knockoff Herman Millers? Well, no. And what I'm defining as knockoff means a chair that looks identical to this, but lesser quality. No, there is no such thing. There are sellers who will say, here's a Herman Miller Aeron, but sell you a totally different looking chair. So unless you are blind or you don't know what a Herman Miller Aeron looks like, there's no such thing as a knockoff chair, at least not as far as I know. And I've done a lot of research. There's no such thing. Okay, so can I find a chair that's only three years old, has fully loaded for only $500? No, you're not gonna find a chair like that. And this is the most frustrating part. Like people would email me and say, how old is your chair? And I would say, it's nine, it's 12, it's 13 years old. And they'd be like, no, no, I'm not gonna pay for that. Well, okay, buddy, that's fine. But there are only three kinds of chairs out there. There's a brand new chair that will cost you $1,500. There is a chair that is one, two years old that is like new condition. That's gonna cost you eight, $900 or there's everything else, which is how old, however old you want it to be, but it's only gonna cost you a third of the price at like four or $500, again, Craigslist market price. There is no such thing. So if you're looking for a chair that's three years old, you only wanna pay $500, you're not gonna find it, good luck. And uh, yeah, again, more important than how old the chair is, is think about and look for how well the chair functions, because these things were built to last, and if you want that steep discount, you're gonna to have to understand that you're gonna to have to come down and lower your expectations a little bit about the age of the, the ages of these chairs. All right, next question is gonna be, should I buy a used one off of eBay or Amazon? And I'm going to say no. The reason for that is because you cannot see the chair in person. And for all you know, you might get one with gears. I've also read Amazon reviews where they send them the totally wrong chair, like a non Herman Miller Aeron chair. So I've also read about that and I, I would imagine returning that is gonna be a super big hassle. So no, I don't recommend you buy one without being able to see it, without being able to know what you're buying. Cause the pictures will show you like one with tabs and then you'll get one with gears. So don't recommend it. Um, next one, where have I had the most success buying used chairs, used Aerons for cheap? I'm gonna say in order, Craigslist is by far the best place to look. If you don't have Craigslist where you're at, uh, something where people buy and sell use things pretty easily. The next one is gonna be Facebook Marketplace. I've had pretty good success there. And then I've had some success using buy and sell apps like OfferUp. Like I did find, I think, one chair for my friend over in uh, New York using that app. So <clears throat> the last question is, I don't live in the US. Can I do this where I live? Well. I don't know, I haven't lived anywhere out in, outside of the US. I would say that um, try it, right? Use whatever free app or whatever sites are used to buy and sell used things and use the general principles. Search generically and uh, be diligent and uh, pray for some luck. All right, everybody, that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys liked it, again, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have any additional questions. Let me know if you guys have picked up any really cool things in the use section of whatever you guys used. And until next time, everybody, stay honest.